hello students welcome back we are in the third video of circulatory system icc 10 biology so let us learn in the circulatory system as you know there is a heart which is just a pump which does not produce any cells or anything except for the pressure in the blood its only function is to create some pressure in the flowing liquid fluid called as the blood if there is a pressure only then the blood can start or can continue to move throughout the blood vessels of your body so that pump about that pump heart is what we will be learning other than that we should also learn about blood vessels which we will do in another video so learning about heart first and foremost you know there is an exact location question a lot of exact qu location questions we will be covering in this video so stay tuned first and foremost the exact location of heart please write it as such how it is given in your textbook it is right in the center between two lungs and above the diaphragm you can also add slightly tilted towards the left hand side it's giving here but it's not included in that sentence but that is also required coming to what is pericardium it's a protective double walled membrane so two walled membrane between the two membranes you have a fluid also the name of the membrane is pericardium the fluid is called as pericardial membrane uh, sorry pericardial fluid and it has function what is the function of pericardial fluid lubrication so read from here reduces the friction during heart beat and protects it from mechanical injuries plus lubrication so two things you are writing coming to the structure of heart we will take that up with the next diagram that is coming up okay uh, just going ahead just to uh, it's easier with this diagram so that's why i've come here there are four chambers of the heart the upper chambers this is one chamber called as atrium and there is another chamber here called as atrium so both of them are atriums in order to differentiate between which is right and which is left we have the uh, direction also along with the name so this side the for your right hand side will be the left hand side of the diagram isn't it imagine a person lying down on your uh, book so that person will be facing you his right and left will be opposite the same way here also this side is the left side so left atrium this chamber right atrium is this chamber you can also see there is a larger chamber which is forget about these uh, white lines you can see a chamber this ch one and another chamber this one those are called as ventricles so first one is called as atrium right and left other one is called as ventricle right and left this is the left one can you find the right one this one this part all right so there are four chambers now blood from right hand side should, should never go to the uh, left hand side okay so because there is a there is a particular reason for that on the left hand side always blood that flows from whichever blood vessel it is coming to this chamber to this chamber it is going to something else isn't it whatever is happening on the left hand side it is all oxygenated blood that is the blood that is containing a lot of oxygen on the right hand side the blood that is flowing is having is deoxygenated that means it has more of carbon dioxide there is nothing called red blood and blue blood it is just for pictorial representation that they show please don't get confused with all those terms okay so let's learn four chambers you are aware right now okay now like i said left hand side and right hand side whatever blood is flowing should not mix with each other so there is a muscular wall which runs from this end to the other end like this this blood vessel is going over it okay it is not cutting through it fine so this part this wall which is continuing here which separates the right hand side from the left hand side is called as septum so four things we learned chambers we learned as well as septum we learned isn't it okay now there are certain blood vessels that are coming into the right atrium also left atrium also they are separate okay so we'll go with the left hand side and learn the left hand side first 
left hand side like I told you blood is coming which is oxygenated blood correct so when it is oxygenated uh, blood what from which part of your body oxygenation can happen can happen only in the lungs correct so the blood vessel that is coming into this chamber would be called as pulmonary why is it called pulmonary because the word is uh, denoting lungs pulmonary means lungs okay um, you have heard of pulmonologist right the same terminology okay right so you have pulmonary vein coming from the lungs reaching into the left atrium from where so now the blood is in left atrium it will go into the left ventricle next step all right from left ventricle where should it go it should go to all the cells of your body okay and now there is one more rule that you need to keep in mind from heart whenever blood is going away a w a y it starts with the a letter a right it would always be an artery all right so blood vessel that is taking blood away in this case the artery's name is aorta okay can you uh, spot aorta from here it is going like this this is the aorta as you can see aorta is branched right aorta some part of the aorta um, goes I mean different part of this branches go into different part of your body and gives oxygenated blood to cells why is that important it is important because cells need oxygen for breaking down of glucose and that process is called respiration you know that right so one of the branches of aorta uh, gives blood to the heart itself okay and that is called as coronary artery right so till now if you have a confusions go back and rewind and see it let me not repeat again okay fine now go to the right hand side right hand side has deoxygenated blood right where is that coming from it's coming from all the cells of your body which has already taken up all the oxygen in the blood and given out the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide came from the respiration of cells right so now that blood which is having carbon dioxide excess in amount we call that as the deoxygenated blood is coming from the vena cava which is the largest vein okay if uh, the cells are on upper side of your body anterior or superior vena cava will bring in the blood if from the legs or lower part of your body inferior or posterior vena cava will bring the blood where is it bringing it to it's bringing into the right atrium this chamber from the right uh, atrium blood would go into the ventricle right ventricle okay this one and from the right ventricle where should this blood go it should go into the lungs for oxygenation correct so where um, what would be the name of that uh, blood vessel definitely there will be a pulmonary attached pulmonary for lungs so it's going away and it is to the lungs okay so pulmonary and away artery pulmonary artery it is going i hope it is clear now lot more to learn so between the atrium and ventricle as you can see there is a flap kind of structure it is called as a valve what is the purpose of this so for that you should know how does blood go from the atrium to both sides okay this atrium or this atrium eventually blood is going into the ventricle behind below it from the right atrium to right ventricle from the left atrium to left ventricle it is going all right another name for atrium is auricle if the in your textbook it is given as auricle it's just one and the same thing okay now how does the blood go blood goes when there is a contraction of the upper chambers which is the upper chamber Uh, atrium is the upper chamber right this part will squeeze in like this can you see from this the size is reduced all right so um that um what do you say contraction is called as systole what is contracting the atria are contracting so when it is contracting or decreasing in um, size by squeezing in what happens all the blood will flow into the ventricle correct 
from here to here it's coming from this part to here down part it is coming all right now when that blood is coming down uh, it should not it from this ventricle it should go into the next away um, the arteries right one is called this side it, it should go to the aorta and this side it should go to the pulmonary artery correct it should not come back to prevent that back flow from ventricle into the atria on both sides there are valves what are the names of the valves on the right hand side ri you write with ri right right hand side add a t to it t r i tri cuspid valve tri cuspid valve on the right hand side and bi cuspid valve on the left hand side where is that present exact location we have to learn before that where is that uh, in general where is that present between the atrium and ventricle on the right hand side is tri cuspid valve on the left hand side is bi cuspid valve okay that's done now from the ventricle where is blood going it is going into the arteries which artery on the left hand side pulmonary artery and uh, right hand side sorry on the left hand side into the aorta and right hand side into the pulmonary artery it's going both are arteries just at the junction of ventricle and this artery which one either pulmonary artery or aortic uh, blood vessel aorta there is a valve again those valves are called as semi luna valves like i'm telling you again exact location of all this we need to learn give me a minute let me complete explain this and then we'll go there okay fine one more concept is called as diastole now i said uh, how is blood moving blood is moving when the atria are contracting and contraction is called as systole right once it is contracted blood has reached ventricle now ventricle will undergo um contraction and that is shown here and that is called as ventricular systole and this is called as atrial systole i hope that is clear once that systole is over the heart uh, whichever part is um, contracted will go into relaxation and that relaxation is called as diastole d i a s t o l e this this term okay so whenever atria are contracting this part is contracting ventricles are relaxing okay and vice versa so these terms also you should know okay well, we'll go back and learn in the textbook what are the concepts given now um chambers of the heart from there you we have already learned the chambers of the heart if you till now if it is confusing stop here and listen uh rewind and listen multiple times understand the concepts and then come back here okay now what are we learning there are certain questions that are repeatedly asked okay so uh, we will we we need to learn those questions first question why the wall wall the wall right this part wall of um, auricles are thinner compared to ventricles answer is here to yeah pump into far away places ventricles uh, function of ventricle is to pump blood into long distances that is the reason why uh, underline all this learn this okay now coming ahead blood vessels name of the blood vessel should, should be clear by now if not again rewind and listen what are coronary arteries i already explained uh, what are coronary artery uh, the branch of aorta this one one of it goes and uh, gives blood to the muscles of the heart those are called as coronary artery um where is the exact location of it is usually asked arising from the base of aorta okay that is the coronary artery now because of the blockage there are uh, certain complications that happen one or two mark expected question is here also um, heart attack is also called as myocardial infarction mcq um chest pain uh, due to insufficient supply of blood is called angina pectoris all this also you need to learn okay now next thing is coming to the chordae tendine every time this is asked what is chordae tendine okay so what are what is this chordae tendine let's see we'll go back to the heart diagram you can see that uh, the valve is here right tricuspid valve this valve is like a door imagine a door okay now it is not just one door imagine three doors simultaneously making an entire door okay 
that each door we can call as flap flap okay so three small flaps make up the valve tricuspid valve now something needs to keep that flap in place otherwise it's not going to work isn't it so whatever keeps the uh, three flaps in place is called as chordae tendine all right so what is chordae tendine uh, read here uh, the three thin triangular leaf like flap of the tricuspid valve its apices uh, that the tip of it is held in position by cord cords and these cords are called as chordae tendine what kind of cords they are they are tendon you remember tendon and ligament so tendinous cords they are okay and about this definitely there is one question um arising from the muscular projection of the ventricular wall called as papillary muscle so they'll ask you what is papillary muscle what are papillary muscles the muscular projections of the ventricular valve are called as a uh, ventricular wall sorry wall is called as papillary muscle then exact location of pulmonary lunar semi lunar valve is one time asked even aortic wall is also one time asked so these two look exact location please note down exact location of pulmonary semi lunar wall exact location of aortic semi lunar wall exact location of tricuspid bicuspid valve all that needs to be learned as well now one more uh, important thing what causes the dub and lub sound very important two mark question uh, what causes the dub sound and what causes the lub sound okay so we to i told you that it is because of the contraction followed by relaxation of of the atrium and ventricle that causes uh, blood to flow correct uh, now during this time the uh, tricuspid valve will open and close semi lunar valve will open and close that closing uh, makes some sound okay so which uh, one makes the dub sound semi luna valve uh, the closing of the semi luna valve closes the dub sound and the closing of bi and tricuspid valve one here one here both of them closing that produces the lub sound please don't write it is because of the uh, systole or uh, um uh, Di diastole no that that's not the answer it is because or some children will write it is the heart beat that's not the answer the answer is closing of semi lunar as well as this one specifically dub for left semi lunar closing uh, lub for bicuspid tricuspid closing okay so that much you need to write then um, circulation of blood how is circulation of blood happening uh, the, the same thing here uh, in the left hand side how is it uh, happening because um the left or right whatever it is atria will uh, first and foremost atria will um con uh, contract called as systole followed by relaxation of the atria there is no other diagram i was looking for that okay uh, so from with this we learn atria will contract first this part of the heart will contract first okay so blood will all go into the ventricle at that time once blood goes atria will relax followed by uh, ventricle uh, contracting relaxing and this causes the blood to uh, circulate from atria to ventricle to uh, the aorta to uh, on the side aorta and the other side pulmonary uh, artery and then back to the cells and this pumping causes a, a force and that force is the reason why blood is able to circulate we we'll learn about double circulation heartbeat and pulse and everything in the upcoming classes hope till now whatever we learned is clear if not please keep repeating the video listen to it understand it and make notes very important okay i'll see you in the next video thank you children